How's it going? I thought I'd do a wee uh, pun here, but it'd uh, be a good idea coming up to Christmas if I'm going to try these and it's, it's not the most difficult thing in the world. You just order these little things online, they're called kilt pins. You can tie them on hooks as well, oversized hooks and attach pins yourself, but that's the general idea. I've done these before and uh, even people outside of fishing seem to like the lock so it's a good idea coming up to Christmas if anybody's interested in giving this a go. This is how I do it. You can make and put any kind of flea you want on these. I'm going to just put a very simple colour combination with very simple techniques that I think looks all right, all right and well. So if you're going to watch and follow that along, that's great. So these are kilt pins. This one happens to be a 50mm one. And the thread I'm using chartreuse because I want a light result at the end with the floss tail and the, everything, or the floss tag. I don't want to use a dark thread to tint that. So the first thing you need is the tag. And you can make these as long as you want. I want the whole flight to stay within the pin, so I don't want the tail hanging out. So I come down, there's about a third of the pin left with nothing on it. And I tie my tag, and in this case, it's going to be chartreuse. I come down another four or five winds, and then nice touch and turns, come all the way back up to where you caught on the floss, and then return it around. Touch and turns. As best you can and just take your time as I say these are more for presentation than anything you can make them look like whatever way you want tie whatever style of play you want on them I'm just doing this one for demonstration purposes and let me floss them um, just in case anybody's interested and wants to have a go I had a few comments on me when I posted them on Facebook people asking where I got the pins and how I tied them so I thought I'd put a wee video up on YouTube and do something a wee bit different so tie in your floss get rid of the excess really you should epoxy or varnish this but I'm not just for the demonstration of the video I want something quick and simple so the next thing is golden pheasant crest you saw a nice one curved and I'm going to actually use two and I would suggest you still double up all materials body hackles and tails people seem to like them more bushy than and sparsely dressed. Now what I'm looking for is a tail that hits about the back of the pan but again that's just my preference. You want a longer tail because you think that looks better or a shorter tail because you think that looks better. It's entirely up to you. It's just a purely an aesthetics thing and what you like to see. This is just the theory or the how you would tie them. Or, you know, I've had enough questions about where I got the pins and how they were done and things I got there so I thought it was doing it and I don't think if I, there is another video I haven't searched on a kilt pun been tied on YouTube I'm sure there is but if anybody follows my videos it's a good idea for Christmas for wee presents so the next thing you can go whatever way you like I'm going to go for a, a metal rib you can go orange or red but go well this combination is going to be a purple and chartreuse flame mainly but I'm going to go with a purple or a red wire here and I'm going to tie it on from the far side Lift the wire out, this is another, it just sits so it helps the tie everything and a wee bit of tension slides down a bit better. You're right on top of the tail now where you left off. The next thing you need is dubbing. Again, you can do whatever colour you want and go for whatever colour you want. This one's a predominantly purple fly with a wee bit of shirt on, so I need some purple dubbing. And uh, See this one is what I'm going to use, but you could use wool or something like that if you want to make a wee bit neater job. But I'm going to just use some purple see this for double. This stuff's a bit old and a bit clumped together, so I'm going to have to manipulate it a bit. Just take your time and enjoy tying the things rather than making it a chore, because they they are a good distraction from tying wee small flies and a good way of using up larger materials that you may have soft tackles and cork tackles and different game bird hackles and dye materials that you might have larger feathers of that you have no real need to use. That's a great way of using them up. So I'll get a few turns of the seeds for on. Once I have that cat caught on, I'm going to add a wee bit more each time and just get a few turns of the thread on and re-tighten the, the rope. You need a fair bit of dubbing for a pin even of this size and this would be a fairly small one. But it's the most popular one, the four inch or a hundred millimeter ones, rarely people want. They're too big and too heavy. And the seventy-five millimeter ones are a bit more common, but this fifty 
millimeter size seems to be the most common that people like and wear the most. So just get your seeds first done, it's a laborious job I know but I'm just not used to putting on this much seeds from any one thing so <laughs> it seems laborious to me. So once you get up, I like to leave a wee bit of a gap at the front so it's not tied right up to the front but some people like to fill the whole pin with the fly, I, I don't. So the palmer hackles are going to be purple cock hackles. And I'm going to put on two just for extra, extra bushiness. And uh, these are cheap uh, cork necks that I use for salmon flies. And I'm sure the flies here in Ireland, there's nothing special about these. And it's a good way of using these larger ones that you, you're probably not going to use for your normal fishing flies. Well, I don't use them on. So I'm going to have to use my hands here because when I double use two palmered hackles, I make a mess with my hackle players. So. But it's the same thing, you just get your hackle on, just by twisting it around, keeping it nice and tight, keeping the angle somewhat similar if you can. And you can make these longer or shorter in the body, as I say, or more bushy in the body, or less bushy in the body. I need the hackle players to finish this last wee bit off, and get my hand out of the road. But uh, it's all personal preferences and not for doing a job, it's just for looking sort of. Next, I'm going to just release some of the fibers. Get a bit caught down. Catching them with a the rub as normal. Release and then wiggle it through the fiber because there's a fair bit of fiber there and we want to get most of it standing up. This is never going to go for a swim, so if you can trap down as little as possible, it's probably better in these things. So you come to the last turn, the same as I always do. Pull it down to the bottom, stroke everything back, come through up to the 12 o'clock position. Take the thread, keep the tension in the thread. Cross it about the 11 10 o'clock position, bend sideways. This keeps everything uniform and nice and straight. The wire won't roll over the top and create an unlevel surface for you to apply your next set of hackles. So, we're going to come up a wee bit because we've got a fair bit of hackles here to use the front. And we'll come back down and then we'll bend and worry or cut away that wire, whichever you prefer to do. I'm basically going to bend and worry away. It's kind of a thick wire, I don't want to be cutting it. And then you come and take off the tar end of your waist. And that's the body done. Now the next thing now, again you could leave it the gap there if you want, if you just want an all purple flea, but since we're trying to make it look like something a wee bit different, a wee bit better than average, we'll put another wee colour on this is Shirtshire's hen. You could use cork hackles as well. I just think they look better hen hackles for this kind of application. It's not going to go fishing, so it doesn't matter about the movement or any of that, this is purely just a mix of colour and how it looks when it's dry and I think hand hackles look a little bit nicer when they're dry than cork hackles. So. Tie that on. Get your hackle players. So you can see what I'm doing this time but I normally prefer to do a ring in my hands. So I stroke back all the fibres. Get a few turns of this on. You don't want too much of this. Just enough so you see it. Just get all the fibres back. That's more than enough. You don't want to turn or two of that. So I'll stroke all them fibres back. Turn this excess bit sideways. It can help you avoid catching too many of the hackles fibres on. And then I'm going to just come on and cut that off as close as I can. And tidy up. Come right back against the Shirtshire's hackle. The next one is a wee bit of purple hackle again. Again we just want a few turns of this, we don't want to go too crazy with this. So we'll select more sort of fibre similar in length but again you only want a few turns. So we'll tie this in at the tip like I do all head hackles and collar hackles. They're great gifts to do, you look nice when they're done. And some of them can be as complicated as you want to make them. You can tie dry flies, wet flies, whatever flay the person might like or even just a colour combination that uh, 
you like to cover of and a shape of a pie that you like the style of you know for catching fish so for catching your eye put on your purple hackle same way I put on the chartreuse hackle this one's going to take a few more turns because it's a cheaper neck that other one was a saddle and it was a, a good saddle so only a few turns was needed this one hasn't got as many fibers so we'll put an extra half turn to a turn on just to accommodate for that I'll try your best with these longer ones they're going to take a wee bit more organizing they go back but you'll get there just take your time enjoy the time as I say of these things and make a nice break from the small flights anything I might be pointing forward at this point we'll take them off and come back again you could leave it at that that would be very nice nice color combination of the purple and the chartreuse but there's a fella I got recently from Sam McGowan at the Irish Fire Supplies that uh, I also like and it's a uh, Michigan blue back on a on a ring neck pheasant dyed magenta so it's got nice mottled markings on it and it finishes this brooch pen whatever you want to call it off nice so we'll expose the tip on that little feather again I would never use these for anything else other than this at this size the small ones at the front are great for octopus style plays and different colours and throw tackles on uh, traditional wets but bigger boys are good for these kind of things and it's a lovely colour and a lovely mottled marking on it and it does still show through with the dyeing process it's not dyed out of it or bleached out of it so it's a nice wee addition to put on if you have it but if not the hand hackles would be uh plenty fine as well so we we'll to get this on now and this is the longer stem so i can not use my hackle players and you will just see what i'm doing so try your best to get that first turn once you get the first turn on if there's not too many hackle fibers going crazy the rest of the job should be pretty simple so you get the first turn a wee bit crooked and wrong it sort of sets you up for the rest of it to not be the best it's just there it's slipping again take your time don't panic just go back get it to how you like it how you want it to be and it gets tricky up around here because of the extra sort of metal and iron work that's in front of these things to pull back the the fibers it takes a little bit of practice to sort of and just swing it around them so let's take a look and see if you like that that looks good to me we'll catch this tie it down get your scissors on sort of unround the iron work come right up and back down and that's it now with a the only hand finish would be far better option here but I struggle to do those so I'm going to persevere with a well work finish tool which isn't the best idea but it's just more fiddly if you do a lot of manipulating to get the sit where you need to get the sit to get three four turns on the object itself it's the same as a fishing plane a few coats of varnish and that you can do these with lots of different styles. I put one up on Facebook that was much more like a classic style wet or a classic style salmon play and uh, on a bigger pan. So you can go all the way from crazy mad, the most advanced as you want to be, and that's there's even madder ones than these done by some more talented tires than me. But you can go from this to a simple bumble or even a black panel tie on a wee ordinary safety pan. Or a big steel head fly, or any of the other mm, types. There's mm. a steel head fly tied on with a pin attached to the back. I don't know if you can see that. And then the fly itself is tied on an actual steel head iron, a 3 0, done in very similar colours to that. So you do them many different ways, and I hope that helps in the great Christmas gifts. These things are pennies to buy online and uh, all different sizes and colours. You can get them in silver, black, whatever. So hope somebody gives it a go. And, uh, gives us a presence a great handmade thing that you're just not going to be able to go out and buy so thanks for watching